Good morning and happy Easter to all who are watching on this glorious, glorious Easter morning. We're glad you're with us. We hope you are all well, and we hope you are in good voice to sing out loud and strong. Let us begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to a new life. Let us now give thanks for this gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water for the water in this font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever, amen. Our first hymn for this morning is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Oh, 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 oh,
together, let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we, who have not seen, have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes to us from the book of Acts in the second chapter. Now Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You who are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor his flesh experienced corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that are, of us that are witnesses, here ends the first reading. The second reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also, also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, that he, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with those scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of us who are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and all his grace toward, the, toward, toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Here ends the second reading. And the gospel for this morning comes to us from St. Mark in the 16th chapter. Now when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they just saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, here is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. 
There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Beloved friends in Christ, this is the good news that is the gospel of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, the risen one, amen. Their plan had worked to perfection. They had him brought before Pilate in the square. He had no defense for the charges that we conjured up against him. He stood there, helpless. He would not do anything, say a word to defend himself. And as they heard that, as they heard the silence from his lips, they knew that their plan was going to work. They had spread the word among those hundreds of thousands of people in Jerusalem, that when he was brought before Pilate, they were to show no sympathy for him. They were to beg Pilate to have him crucified. They had even been able to persuade one of his followers, Judas Iscariot, to betray his teacher, in that garden in Gethsemane. They even cooked up charges of sedition and insurrection against him, ones that Pilate simply could not ignore. The plan was perfect. They saw that he was beaten with a cat of nine tails, The blood streamed down his head from a crown of thorns that the the Romans had placed upon his head. His back was bloodied. He was barely able to walk, but yet they gave him this heavy wooden cross and forced him to carry it up the hill to that place called Golgotha. They watched him as he was nailed to the cross. They saw the cross lifted up with him suspended upon it. They heard him cry out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then with one last gasp, he uttered, it is finished. The plan had worked to perfection. They saw the centurion's spear go into his side. They saw the water drain from his side. They saw him taken down from the cross, seeing that he was dead. They saw him carried away, put into a tomb. The massive stone was rolled in front of it. They even went to Pilate and asked to put a guard around the tomb because there had been rumors that Jesus claimed that he would be raised on the third day. And they were afraid that some of his disciples might go to the tomb and snatch his body and claim him to be resurrected. And all day Saturday, everything was in in silence. They looked at the tomb from time to time 
to see that the stone was still in place, that the guards were still keeping watch. They went home that Saturday satisfied that the plan was perfect. But then suddenly, on Sunday, rumors started to emerge that these women had gone to the tomb. And when they arrived there, the stone, as massive as it was, was moved away. The stories persisted that they had actually gone into the tomb. And there was a young man sitting there saying to them, don't be afraid. Jesus, whom was crucified, has been raised from the dead, just as he said he would. Go and tell the others. Let them know that Jesus is indeed alive. But their hearts were still heavy. They were, they were troubled. They were terrified. They didn't know what they should believe. And so they left in silence. But yet they remembered one, one thing that the, this young man had said. He told them, Jesus is going to Galilee. Tell Peter and all of the apostles, tell him he's going there. He'll meet them there. The question is, why would Jesus return to Galilee? If it was you or me, wouldn't we have gone right back into Jerusalem? Wouldn't we have descended that hill and gone right up to the temple and pounded on the doors and said to Caiaphas and Annas and all of the other priests of the temple, you have lost. I am alive. Wouldn't you have gone to the court of Pilate's palace and screamed out, Pilate, I am alive. That's the truth. That's what you and I would have done. But instead, Jesus chose to go back to Galilee to the place where it all started, to his humble beginnings. He went back to this place, not the big city of Jerusalem where the Passover feast was taking place, not this megalopolis of a city where there was all sorts of classes of people. No. Jesus went back to Galilee where his story had begun. He went back to be among the regular people, the regular folks, the carpenters, the fishermen, the people that raised cattle and, and pigs, that grew crops. He went back to be with the regular people to reveal himself. Oh, they had heard. Many of the people from Galilee had been in Jerusalem. They had seen him executed. They had gone home heartbroken. So Jesus went back to them, to the regular folks, to tell them that he was raised from the dead and he had conquered death. He had forgiven all their sins by his death on the cross. And he had come back to them and would stay with them forever, even if just in spirit, to remind them that a God is not, God is not a God of vengeance. God is not one who seeks revenge. God is one of love. God is the one who sent his only begotten son into the world to save the world, not to have it condemned, to have the, all of their sins forgiven, to go back to them as a risen man, to reveal to them the kingdom of God, that it was now 
restored for all people of all times, from the, for their ancestors, for them, for all of their descendants that were to come. Jesus was alive. He is alive today. And for this, we rejoice and give thanks to God. Amen. Let us continue with the prayers. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church of the world and all who are in need. Open the doors that we close, O oh God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O oh God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world that you have made so that all living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Open the rooms that we lock, O oh God, to those who live without a homeland or a place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts that we close, O oh God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O oh God, and the pursuit of peace throughout the world and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we continue to pray for all those recovering from illness or indoor injury. We especially lift up Gina, Joan, Pastor Paul Herpick, Pastor Steve Luki, Kristen Gordy, Chris, Ella, Rebecca, Morgan, Marsha, Milt, Kathy, Sam, Shirley and Kathy, Rose, Sandy, Waldmar, and any others whom we know to be in need of prayers for healing. We pray for all those who are recovering from COVID. We lift up our prayers for those who will be undergoing surgeries and medical procedures this coming week. We pray for healing for their bodies and comfort and peace of mind for all as they await results. We remember in our prayers those for whom this quarantine and life of separation is a time of deep loneliness. Let us reach out to them and bring the peace and light of Christ into their lives. We pray for those whose homes are not safe havens, especially those living in abusive homes and relationships. We continue to pray for the safety of the students, faculty, the support staff of all schools, colleges, and universities, that all might remain free of the ravages of COVID-19. We pray for our healthcare workers, first responders, essential workers, as they put the needs of, and safety of others ahead of their own safety. And even as the rate of infection continues to fall, let us remember that by following safe behaviors, we are protecting others who may be more vulnerable than we are. Let us remember that even as we gather in our own homes, rather than together here in this church building, we are more than ever called to be your church. Let us be bold enough to continue your work in our communities in ways that may be new or untried to us. We pray for those who serve in the military and their families. We lift up our prayers for their safety and well-being. We ask that all homecomings be joyful ones. And as they serve throughout this world on our behalf, we pray for a lasting peace in our time. And we pray for any and all whom we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts.
Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember all those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death that we embrace the peace that you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray in your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead rise all of you, raise all of you to new life, fill you with hope, turn your mourning into dancing. May Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 369 in the Red Book. It is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Christ, Christ is risen, just as he said, go in peace, share the good news, be the good news, alleluia, thanks be to God, alleluia.
reminder that you may begin making a reservation to attend in-person worship beginning noon today. Remember, we are limited to about 30 people. So please, if you do not receive a phone call confirming that you have a seat, please do not come next Sunday because we don't have a spot for you. Call the church office, leave us your name, your address, phone number, the number of people who will be attending. And remember, it is only people in your household that you may make a reservation for. We have council meeting this Thursday night, which is April the 8th at seven o'clock PM via Zoom. You will receive the reports and the link early this week. And now have a blessed Easter. Have a wonderful day and know how much you are loved. Thanks be to God. Amen.